Hi, today we're looking at photographing Goosanders. This is a, a town park behind me. You can probably see the houses uh, running all the way around here in a big circle. It's only a very small park, but at the moment there's lots of Goosanders here. There were males and females first thing this morning, now there's only females left. I'm not sure I got any footage at all of the males before they disappeared. But they're certainly very tame and approachable because there's so many people walking around here exercising their dogs, they've got used to the people. Now there's a weir, a very small waterfall right in the middle of the, the lake and that's where I've stood because this is where all the action is and it's not just goose sanders I've been photographing but all sorts of other birds too. The weir was definitely the centre of attraction. The birds were leaping up it and then leaping back down it. It's not as if they were playing but there was certainly a lot of traffic at the weir. Some more successful traffic than others. But if you're slightly embarrassed then just flap your wings. Give it a moment's thought and try again. This is a female with a brown head. We didn't actually photograph any males at all. They were there in the morning and they came back in the evening. But just about made it that time. Well, everything I've been doing has been based around this waterfall and it's really been a great morning. There's all sorts of common birds been coming in and it's been very interesting. There's a kingfisher flying up and down as well. It's amazing how much wildlife you find in the middle of a, a small town or even big cities. I've often said when I've been traveling that I turn up in a new country, I go into the tourist office and I want to know where's your rubbish dumps, where's your sewage farm, where's your industrial estates, because those are the places where the wildlife is often tame and approachable, you can get close to things. I also want to know where the city parks are, especially ones with water, because they always attract the wildlife and uh, also zoos. I always visit the local zoo because it's, it's not the captive stuff I'm trying to photograph but the garden birds that are attracted into that zoo looking for free food. You go to India, go to Delhi, make sure you go to Delhi Zoo because you do all sorts of common garden birds, minor birds and storks and herons which are much easier to approach within the zoo grounds than they are out in the wilds. So here, this has been a fabulous place to be photographing this morning just because they're so used to the people. So having leaped up the waterfall, we're now going to leap down. It's great fun. All of the slow motion footage is taken on the Panasonic G9 at 180 frames per second. The Olympus will do 120 frames per second, which is why I'm tending to use the Panasonic. With both cameras you would have to manually focus which is a bit tricky, especially with a moving subject, and I'm not very adept at it. So uh, there's an awful lot of the manual focus slow motion that I did not get sharp. But I was there for much of the day, from quite early in the morning until the sun was going down in the evening, so I had plenty of time to keep trying. The sound of a gun you can keep hearing going off that's a clay pigeon shoot, which is not too far away. Mallard also having a go at jumping up the waterfall. Not too bothered that he's upset the goosanders. Probably one of the reasons that this pool is quite successful is the water's moving quite rapidly. It's basically a river that gets wide enough to be called a lake at this point. And although I was happy enough with some of the stills pictures I took during the morning session, the best stills pictures were taken in the late afternoon, about 10 minutes before the sun set. have another go here jumping down the waterfall
Now watch this bird. It appears to drink at the waterfall. And I saw that happen three times. Wonder what the difference is between the water here at the waterfall and throughout the rest. There, there you go, this bird's drinking from the top this time. You can notice in the right hand side of the waterfall there's icicles. It was a very cold day. Canada geese quite often were on top of the waterfall. And to help with the manual focusing I have peaking active. Peaking is when the sharp part of the picture changes colour and you can choose the colour. It can be red, white, blue and I do swap it about depending upon the subject. But I get frustrated with it because sometimes I'm convinced that I had the picture sharp when I took it, that the pixels were the right colour and when I get the results back it's not as sharp as I expect. I also have a 5 inch monitor that sits on top of the camera sometimes but that wouldn't really work in these circumstances because the monitor would have the sun shining on it it would be very difficult to view it it's in the winter the sun doesn't get very high you can't really shade that monitor it would work if I was inside a hide but outside of a hide I find it very difficult to view the image the Canada geese just like the gooseanders were jumping up and down the waterfall So we're now into the second half of the day, it's about half past two and the sun has moved around so I can now do them from the top of the dam and there's a very nice picture to be had there if I can get the other black-headed gulls and mallards to move out of the way. It's a totally different picture. So I'm much happier here with the colours on the water. I'd like the bird to move more central into the middle of the waterfall, away from the branches, like that. And you can see that line immediately behind the bird, that's the waterfall where it's going over the edge. So it throws the water behind the bird out of focus. So this was the spot where I took the best stills pictures, but I couldn't do it until it was almost three o'clock when the light got onto it. But it just shows it doesn't matter how much money you spend on cameras and lenses, you've got to have the right situation. A nice backdrop, nice colours in the water, you start getting attractive pictures. So I'll just show you three of the stills pictures I took. It's a pity I didn't get the males as well. But then the sun started to hit the top of the nearby houses and creating a shadow across the waterfall. So there was only about 15 minutes to take the, the best stills pictures. Now there are places in the UK where goosanders can be photographed fairly routinely where they're tame and approachable. Hoganfield Lock just outside of Glasgow is the most reliable I think. It's a bit awkward because there's a fence there which is difficult to photograph with but you can get some very nice goosander pictures there. But the best place I've ever been to photograph goosanders is Lake Geneva in Switzerland. The birds are extremely tame there, they come very close to you. On the southeast corner there's nice low banks where you can lie down and be level with the water. The water is a lovely colour. It's just a fantastic place to photograph gooseanders. I'm only going to show you this one picture because I'm hoping to go back there and make a YouTube video on the gooseanders at Lake Geneva. 
So just this one picture of a male in flight. I got lots of flight pictures there as well as birds on the water. Now this picture was taken a few years ago, but if you were to look at the EXIF data for it, it was taken on the 25th of December, which just shows what a sad life I have. But it was a wonderful day, lots of light, and for some reason there was hardly any people about. Thanks for watching.